Well, hi there, people. Some of my viewers might recognize this thing from an older video. It's a cheap Chinese no name. I basically needed to modify it to stop it from uh, spewing out uh, UV light and blinding us. And it worked for about two weeks. And then for no particular reason, it refused to turn on. Not overheated because uh, the previous time when it was on, it was on only for about five minutes or something like that. So basically something happened, but not overheating. It just crept out on itself. At this point, I'm going to quickly just plug it uh, in a socket and see if it does anything. Absolutely nothing. So it's clearly not uh, not working anymore. Which means I will undo this and open up this thing and treat it like it has live capacitors in it because who knows if they put a bleeder resistor or not in there. But most likely this thing just burned itself to death. Awesome. Yeah. So people don't buy cheap Chinese crap unless it's of proven quality because some of them are cheap. They are obviously made in China, but are actually good quality. Those are rare, but in occasions they do exist. This one, uh, nope, wasn't one of those. I was pulling on this to release the double-sided adhesive tape, which is a really professional way of holding this in here. Uh, and it uh, decided to actually come apart. The sad thing is that I don't see any signs of uh, stuff being blown up. So most likely it's the chip itself that has gone. And I have absolutely no way of fixing that. I hoped honestly that it's a capacitor popped out up or something like that, but no. I'm going just to check this, uh, which might be a fuse, or at least it's a diode in, in the place of a fuse, and see if that's maybe blown. That would be a lucky thing, but I don't think so. Anyway, let me see what I can do in here. Lifted the capacitors, and yes, I checked them, no number voltage is uh, in there anymore. So lifted them just to see if there's anything underneath. Uh, checked all the diodes, the resistors, they all seem to be good. No marks again on the PCB, no burn smell. Search for this, uh, I think it's, it's a BP8501 or 8601 LED driver, presumably. Uh, couldn't find any data sheet on it. Uh, I think I could only find it on Taobao or somewhere uh, in Chinese and it wouldn't let me access the, the website at all or the data sheet, whatever. This one is scratched uh, off so I cannot even see what it is, but presumably this is the cont Wi-Fi con uh, chip controller that's telling this little guy right here to to tell in its uh, turn to these big uh, guys right here, give power to the LEDs. But yeah, and, and nothing seems to be burned even in here in the filtering stage. So yeah, I'm going to try and connect it once again now that I've moved, let's say, the capacitors a tiny bit, but no, 99% this thing is, is completely dead. And the stupid part, as you can see, it has a fairly high voltage. These high voltage ones are much harder to uh, come by compared to the standard 12 or 24 volt ones. So I'm basically almost unable to find a replacement for this, or actually not almost, I am unable to find it. So uh, presumably I will also swap all the LED strips inside of this thing and obviously this and convert it to 24 volts or something. Uh, I honestly don't know at this point. I need to take out all of those strips and see the total length. So I know what length of lead strip to buy. I need to find the 
a fairly high power LED strip because honestly these things, that's why they run at high voltage, are quite powerful the LED strips inside of this. But I have nothing to drive, drive them with, so yeah. Okay, so to fix this, I reached out to a Romanian website, webled.ro, uh, and they sent me basically all that I need to fix it. Uh, adapter, controller with remote, and uh, two tons, tons, I mean uh, colors, warm white and uh, natural white as far as I know. Uh, and batteries for the remote, that's a nice touch and even good batteries to fully repair this. It's all in here. So let's get to it. Okay, so got everything out of the packaging. Packaging go away. Uh, maybe for the remote packaging stages for a little bit. I have this variant right here. So it goes from 12 to 24 volts, the controller itself, with a remote. So this is just a dimming controller. There are other variants from the same Simply Light uh, company, brand. But I just needed a dimmer. I, I didn't want colors in this light fixture. And uh, for the power brick, this is what we get, 12 volt, 5, 12 volt, 5 amp, 60 watts. Get that out of the way. These are 8 mm wide strips. This was using 7 mm, but 7 mm is not that common. And this for 1 mm will fit in there without any issues. This is built like a brick. So much better than this stupid thing that we will get out. And these two basically will make a better one of these because this one failed in month this in theory at least this thing built like a brick will uh, keep on going and i don't see any reason why this wouldn't uh, keep on going also i really like the remote it's a touch so much easier to to clean it doesn't have the buttons and it has this wall support which honestly is great with small kids in the house you want to put this out of the way way where they can reach it and on the wall it's the best possible place you don't even need to take it in your hand you put it next to the switch and just do what you need it might have a led in here that will uh, tell us that it's actually sensing what we are doing so that's also good uh, they sent me some batteries good brand which is again a bonus so let's get into opening this thing up and spreading it all around. Yeah, I need to throw away the packaging because otherwise I will not have room for how many parts will be in this. But as always, open all the screws all around and just take layers and remember how to put them back. That's important, the remember part. Okay, so let me tell you what I want to do. On the exterior, the longest one, I will put... Uh, natural white light on one output of the controller on the shorter one and on this exterior of the star they will be in series on the other output of the controller and this interior plus this which will basically just light through the through the stars that's wasteful uh, wasted energy basically just lighting up those but anyway there's that I will put again white light, uh, natural white light on the other output of the controller. So I'm basically using all three outputs of the controller. So let's remove the LED strips from this. I'm not going to damage them. I will keep them because I have other uh, light fixtures that use same voltage LED strips. So in case one of those LED strips fails, uh, I can use this to fix it. Just want to show you again the barbaric way of getting this out. Basically, you need to uh, push it from under here. Yeah, it's rough. You go really slow, but it seems to survive it because this is reused and it was taken out in the same way. So there's that. Okay, I'm ready for a trial run. Connected everything from the 12 volt PSU to the controller 
put the batteries in the remote which is the standard type with a simple cover and by mistake powered it on and yes it has a led right in the middle where i thought it will from minus you power it on from zero off and don't run them too, uh, for too long like this you will overheat them and they are bright and from here you change some modes so oh, yeah that's a bit flashy too flashy for me for what i need okay again uh, these things in my case don't do anything uh, to the way i have it connected at least i unglued the original wires which are shorter and put a bit longer wires and now i'm putting some heat shrink tube on top of this area basically simulating this but i don't have transparent or white so i'm putting a bit of black maybe i will cover one of the leds but yeah nothing that i can do about it okay heat shrink in place satisfied of the situation here i didn't have again white or transparent uh, tube so i use this one but i didn't cover the lead so it's all good and now i'm going to install it in uh, the channel and put it out through the hole and through the other hole will be the other tube that i'm putting in this area so let me install it now putting the lead strip in place and don't peel off the protection from all of it from the start it will be a pain it will glue itself to anything just remove tiny bits as you push it in the channel and glue it just an update uh, update sorry i've put actually warm white on the outside decided that because this is used in the bedroom uh, i want predominantly to have warm uh, colors on it normally in working areas you prefer uh, whitish light like in an office or maybe even a kitchen but in a bedroom it's better to have a yellowish light so warm white i really like that these strips have short cutting intervals so they match perfectly as you can see just a quick test after putting this to make sure all the connections are good and they are okay perfect let's continue with the rest of them testing the light uh, elements the final ones all is working at this point so let's start putting everything back together Okay, bottom part ready. Now we only need to put the top part in here and make sure the wires go through the holes. Lined up all the holes. Now we simply put in the screws. Okay, putting the last element uh, in here. This is wasted light once again, wasted electricity actually, because it will only light up the little cutout in the shape of stars but uh, yeah there's another one right here which does exactly the same but uh, it increases the wife approval factor so uh, we do as she says we put everything together i'm going to change a bit the layout and we will have something like this not like the other one was right here in the middle somewhere because now we have two elements and the reliability of this thing for sure is much better than that absolute no name that had in it before and yes attaching them in place with double sided tape although obviously they have no way to fall down they are on top but yeah what's sure is sure small downside to the controller if i put double sided tape in here once I uh, stick it in place, it's there to stay and I cannot reach uh, the screws to change the wires the way they are connected. But uh, I understand why they did it like this. This thing looks nice if it remains visible somewhere. So, yeah. Okay, this thing is working. Uh, tested it. Everything is just fine did my best to distribute the load on um, its three rails three outputs in here 
it, I don't think it was even necessary, honestly. This thing uh, can take 6 amps per rail and this gives it uh, maximum 5 amps. But why not use them if we have them? Run this thing a bit uh, less hot if possible. And yeah, that's about it. Everything working. Let's take this to the ceiling and hope for the best. And an important thing, this has a memory, a good one. If you let it on and you have a power outage, when power comes back, it will stay or it will come back on. If it was off when you have the power outage, it will remain off. So that's quite cool. The no name Chinese one didn't do that. It had the memory for a few minutes and then everything got wiped. It forgot. This one, no, it has somewhat permanent memory for uh, that. So that's great. Okay, let's see. Will this thing turn on or not? It does turn on and it even has a permanent memory. So I left it on the lowest setting for more than half an hour and it still started on the lowest setting, which the cheap Chinese no name was not doing. It was forgetting in under five minutes the last setting. This thing doesn't forget it. And that is awesome, honestly. And I will explain exactly why. And I will show you why having a memory is really important. I basically put the controller inside a Faraday cage and the RF <laughs> waves cannot really go uh, to it from the remote itself. So from a distance bigger than one meter, for example, uh, the remote isn't working anymore. And that's just because of what I did in here and uh, I didn't realize this was, will be happening. On top we have the concrete with uh, rebars inside of it from metal and the rest of this is metal. So it's, it's closed in there. Nothing that I can do at this point in time. So whatever I will set it to, next time when I power it on, by itself it will power on directly at that setting, which is perfect. It's exactly what I want because I'm not always up and down and up and down and what, what not. I set it to something and if in each day, uh, as you can see, it's not, not working that easily. Faraday cage. So <laughs> I managed to shield the, the thing really well by mistake. Anyway, so n not every single day, every single minute I will change the intensity. I will set it to what I like for this particular room and every time I turn the switch on, it will go directly to that intensity and be perfect. So this is what I need. We saved this uh, light fixture from going to the e-waste. Hopefully more people will try to do this by themselves uh, and the planner would be a bit uh, better in that situation. If companies would make also stuff that can be repaired, that would be awesome. Hopefully they will in time try to. So that's about it for this video. Hope it helps you. In which case, please give it a like. Check out my other videos. Thank you WebLED for sending me the parts to fix this. Ah, it's, I'm really happy I could fix it, honestly. And uh, yeah, see you again next time. Bye.